Hey guys, my name is Iman and this is tutorial number 4 on Latin hypercube sampling. In the previous tutorials, I talked about Monte Carlo uh, sampling and I said if you want to have a um, good representation of probability distribution, n number of samples in Monte Carlo approach must be large. In fact, sampling set is not a good uh, representation or is not a good approximation of the actual probability distribution if n number of sample is small. The whole purpose behind Latin hypercube sampling is to recreate the probability distribution with less samples compared to Monte Carlo approach. Uh, the main idea behind this approach is a stratification of the probability distribution. So basically, by using a stratification, we divide the cumulative curve into equal intervals and then we choose one sample inside each stratification. So again, one sample inside each stratification. Here is an example. Let's say we want to generate four samples. If we want to generate four samples, we need to have four stratification. Eight sample, eight stratifications, and so on and so forth. So after we are done with a stratification, we need to choose one sample inside each stratification. Here's one sample, one sample, one sample, and one sample. Again, I'm going to emphasize it. Just one sample per stratification. We cannot have two samples here, just one sample. And again, this like sampling inside each stratification is a random thing. So here's random, here's random, here's random, here's random. But again, only one sample per stratification. That was one dimensional sampling. What about two dimension? First, let me explain where that term comes from, Latin hypercube. Uh, in the context of a statistical sampling, a square grid is called Latin square if and only if there is only one sample in each row and each column. For example, if you consider this grid, this is a Latin square because there is only one sample in each row and each column. And here is another example. This is a Latin square because there is only one sample in each row and each column. So that's for two dimensions, but you know, you can generalize this concept to any number of dimensions. For example, uh, three dimension, we have a cube and there is one sample per row, column and depth. Uh, so that's where uh, Latin hypercube uh, comes from. Uh, if I want to compare Monte Carlo with Latin hypercube sampling, as I said in the previous tutorials, Monte Carlo is a memoryless system. Basically, the approach is memoryless. We generate new samples without taking into account the previously generated sample points. That's why we say uh, the system is memoryless. For example, if we generate four samples, we can have something like this, something like this, something like this. So it's memoryless. But Latin hypercube sampling is an approach with memory. We need to remember in which row and column the sample point was taken. So that's why we need to have a memory. We cannot, we cannot have something, something like this because this is not a, a Latin square. So that's why we need to remember in each row and column the sample point was taken. So here, like one sample, one sample, one sample, one sample. And this is a Latin square because there is only one sample in each row and in, in, and in each column. So again, the main takeaway from this tutorial, the Monte Carlo is memoryless, but Latin hypercube sampling has memory. In next tutorial, I'm going to compare the performance of Monte Carlo with Latin hypercube sampling. Thanks for watching this tutorial.